Hello again, it's Alfie Carpenter here for Suffolk Libraries with another art tutorial video. Just like in the other previous videos, we're going to focus on art activities which use materials and media which we have hopefully in our own households. For today's activity, we're going to focus on a typical landscape composition which is called sky, sea, sand. And it will show you how to go from this to this. Okay, so here is what you will need. You will need something to apply some colour, so pastels, paint, pencils, whatever you have that you are used to using. You'll need a pencil. We're also going to play around with adding some different substances to the painting. So I've got some sand in this one, and I've just got some earth, which I've just got from my garden. Make sure you wash your hands afterwards. You'll need a glue spreader. If you don't have a glue spreader like this, you can try and make your own out of thick card, just like that. PVA glue, my old friend. If you don't have PVA glue, today we're gonna to try and use a mixture of flour, just plain flour and a little bit of water. And it's got this glue consistency, which will act as a mild adhesive. Some scissors, a ruler. You will also need a collection of shiny materials. So I've got old sweet wrappers here from leftover Easter eggs, old packaging, metallic surfaces. And you'll also need your sketchbook or a piece of paper or card. The first step is to map out our composition with a pencil. I'm using a ruler and measuring down from the top of the page to create a straight line across for the horizon. This needs to be about three quarters of the way up the page. I'm then going to create the sea line where it hits the sand. This can be a bit wiggly and wobbly like the sea. The front portion, the sand or beach, needs to be larger than the other two. The next step is to create the sky. I'm using acrylic paint, but you can use whatever you like, pencils or pastels. I'm using very watered down paint and a mixture of different tones of blues, greys, whites and silvers. With a thick brush, I'm just washing it from side to side across the page. Right, we've painted our sky and now we're going to fill in the rest of the composition. So we've got sky, sea, sand. As I've said in previous videos, I want to try and achieve depth and perspective, especially in the landscapes around Suffolk and East Anglia where it's very flat and you can see from a long way. So in order to achieve this with collage we need to think about the order in which we stick things down. The next area we're going to focus on is the sea. We're going to make the sea out of all the shiny wrappers and metallic surfaces that we've got because the sea has got that kind of shimmery glistening effect. We want to try and achieve that with the collage. What we're going to do is we're going to shred all of these different surfaces into different sized strips. So we've got very thin strips here and we've got slightly fatter strips here. And you can do that by using your scissors carefully and cutting up into strips. They don't have to be perfectly straight because the C isn't perfectly straight. It's got wiggly and wavy lines, so I've got a bit of a wavy line there going on. And you can have different colours. The C isn't just all one colour either. There's loads of different tones and hues within the C. I've also got this nice cellophane stuff from all those sweets that I ate over Easter. I found a little bit of kitchen foil here, which is very nice to just tear. We don't really need to use scissors for that. We can tear that and make a strip like that. Now we should have quite a large selection of different strips of the metallic surfaces, which we're gonna stick down to create our C. To do this, we need our glue, which we then apply to the paper, starting from the horizon, which is the furthest point away in the sea. 
In order to accentuate the depth and perspective of the sea and give it that long distance effect, we're going to select the smallest strips and stick them down from the horizon, working our way forwards. You can overlap the strips as you go. Keep building up the layers of shiny surfaces, working from the horizon forward. As you come forwards, you can use larger strips to give the illusion of depth and make sure that there are no gaps so the paper can't be seen underneath. Try and vary the different colours of the sea using different surfaces and different levels of shininess. This will give it a little bit of richness and a more depth. As you get closer to the sand and the shore, use larger bits of the shiny paper and that will make it look like they're really close. Ta-da! So here we have the finished sea. So the next portion we need to work on is the sand beach area. We can do this in a number of different ways. I think it's quite a good opportunity to get a bit experimental with how we create the texture of the sandy beach. You can either use your paint or pencils, pastels, whatever you want to use. But I'm going to encourage you to try and add in an extra element to give a bit more texture. This is where we can use our sand, our earth, or the flour and water combination, you might want to add that in. So on a paint palette, I'm gonna take a bit of color. I'm using acrylic paint again. I've just got this kind of ochre, sandy color. I'm gonna mix that in nice and thick. Maybe add another tone. I'm gonna to add a bit of white and a little bit of gold. Mix that in. Bit of water. I'm using quite a thick brush. I'm then gonna add a little bit of the glue. Just scrape that in. I'm also now going to sprinkle in some of the sand and a tiny bit of the earth for now. Let's see what that looks like. It's definitely an experiment. I might add in some of this flour and water combination. Mix that all together. And then I can start applying it to the paper. You can see it's kind of like a cake mixture. So it doesn't have to be particularly neat. Going right up to the edge of the sea and overlapping it a little bit, just as it would on the seashore. Keep going with this technique, playing around and experimenting with adding things to create the sandy texture. Use lots of different tones and fill up the whole space, making sure there are no gaps. Ta-da! Here's the finished product. So we've got sky, sea and sand, the typical coastal view. I've just finished this off by trimming the edges where I think it's necessary. And then when the whole thing is semi-dried, I've flattened it by putting some heavy books on top of it for just an hour or so and that really helps neaten up everything. I've also gone in with some pencils here, just some faint lines to give a bit more definition to the areas. And there we have it, a nice shimmering seascape.